Chiang Mai and Chiang Rai hit by worst flooding in 30 years, mudslides, fatalities, and ongoing rescue operations. Chiang Mai and Chiang Rai experience worst flooding in 30 years. Two people lost their lives in mudslides in Mayari district, Chiang Mai, last night, with four more still missing after severe rainfall triggered the worst flooding the area has seen in three decades. Search efforts resumed this morning in Ban Doi Laim and Ban Liari, the villages hit by mudslides. Emergency workers are struggling to reach the missing due to torrents of muddy water. In Ban Doi Laim, one villager perished, and four others, including a five-month-old girl, a four-year-old boy, and the village headman, are still missing. Ban Liari saw one fatality and two injuries. An emergency operation center has been established at the Doi Lang Tambon Administration Organization Office, while a voluntary border guard barracks is serving as a command center for coordinating search and rescue efforts in Mayari district. Chiang Mai Governor Nyarat Pongsit Hithavorn has instructed district chiefs to monitor conditions closely and ensure rescue teams are ready to respond 24-7. In one area, rescuers set up a rope across a flooded road to rescue six people, including one child, trapped in a house. The highway in villages 4 and 5 of Mayari district is partially flooded, leaving only one lane open, and motorists are urged to proceed with caution. In Chiang Rai's Mei Sai district, heavy rain on Tuesday night led to rising floodwaters, reaching depths of 2 to 3 meters in low-lying areas like Taladmai Long Kon, Pham Kwai, and Muing Deng. Some residents have sought refuge on rooftops, and electricity has been cut in several communities for safety. Troops from Meng Rai Maharaj barracks are assisting flood victims, particularly those in high-risk areas. At midnight, rescue officials issued a warning advising residents in eight communities not to leave their homes due to strong currents and to move to their roofs for safety. Temporary shelters have been opened at from Vihan Temple and Mai Sai Subdistrict's municipal office. Numerous communities in Mai Sai and Wyangpankam, such as Doi Weo, Talad Sai Lom Joy, and my Long Con are inundated, affecting hundreds of households. The border checkpoint between Mei Sai and Myanmar's Takalake Township was temporarily closed due to the flooding, with only citizens from both countries allowed to cross, while cargo vehicles were prohibited. Debris, including garbage and tree trunks, has been swept downstream by the swollen Sai River, becoming lodged at the first Thai Myanmar Friendship Bridge. Thai and Burmese officials have dispatched workers to remove the debris. By 2 p.m. yesterday, part of Fahonyathin Highway near Doi Weo Market had flooded for the first time in years, prompting the setup of a command center to coordinate rescue and relief operations. Flood victims in need of help can contact the following numbers 084 226 1669 053 733422 or 090 096 2255. May Sai has experienced multiple floods in recent months due to heavy rainfall in the northern region. Bangkok Port to become hub for entertainment and commerce, Smart Port Development Plan unveiled. The Thai Transport Ministry has announced plans to partially convert Bangkok Port into an entertainment complex as part of a broader development strategy. However, officials stress the importance of clearer government regulations and guidelines before moving forward. During a press briefing, Deputy Transport Minister Manaporn Charo Enzri clarified that the government does not intend to fully relocate the port. Instead, the focus is on enhancing the existing port's operations to improve water transport and logistics systems. The proposed development aims to maximize the use of Bangkok Port's 2,353 Rai, 928-acre, area, repurposing underused sections for housing and commercial projects under the Smart Port Development Plan. Addressing concerns about the entertainment complex, Manaporn explained that while Bangkok Port is a key target for the project, the entire area won't be affected. The Port Authority of Thailand is already working on plans to develop the port as a smart port, with mixed-use commercial spaces, improved transshipment processes, stadium construction, and relocating residents to high-rise buildings. The entertainment complex is just one part of the larger vision. Manaporn further noted that if the government provides policy clarity, relevant agencies will meet to discuss the next steps. A multidimensional approach is needed, and it is expected that the Prime Minister will form a committee to study the proposal in detail.
the project must also be presented to Parliament as part of the government's policy. Officials are awaiting further regulations and guidelines before proceeding. This plan represents a significant shift in the future use of Bangkok Port, blending its traditional logistics role with new commercial and entertainment opportunities. As the initiative moves forward, it is likely to spark both support and criticism from those invested in urban redevelopment in Bangkok. Mid-priced hotels struggle with occupancy and revenue challenges in August 2024. Mid-priced hotels face challenges in August. Hotels in the mid-priced and budget segments continued to face difficulties in August, with tourists in these categories remaining highly price-sensitive. Hotels rated below for stars struggle to maintain both room rates and occupancy levels. According to Thean Prasit Chayapatranan, president of the Thai Hotels Association, THA, the nationwide average hotel occupancy rate rose slightly to 61.8% in August, up from 58.4% year-on-year but still below the pre-pandemic level of 64.7%. The Hotel Operator Sentiment Index for August showed a troubling trend for hotels rated three stars or lower, where occupancy dropped to 49.3%. In contrast, four-star and higher-rated hotels saw an increase in occupancy to 68.8%. Thean Prasit noted that 40% of the 106 hotel respondents had not yet fully restored their revenue, while 20% expected recovery only by the second quarter or the second half of next year. Around 7% of respondents were more pessimistic, doubting they would ever return to pre-pandemic levels. On the brighter side, 31% of hotels, primarily those that invested in renovations and service upgrades, reported higher revenues than before the pandemic. The main clientele for mid-priced hotels were international tourists, accounting for over 50% of bookings, with visitors from China, the Middle East, Europe, and other parts of Asia making up the bulk of the market. For hotels unable to raise room rates, 63% cited customer price sensitivity as their biggest challenge, followed by intense competition, 55%, and a decline in bookings, 42%. The average nightly rate for mid-range hotels remained below 1,500 baht, for lower than 5-star hotels, over 5,000 baht, and 4-star properties, 1,500 to 2,499 baht. Labor shortages also persisted, with 40% of hotels still struggling to fill vacancies, particularly those located in the central region. Heavy rainfall and flooding risks forecasted for Thailand, September 13th to 20th. Heavy rainfall expected in Thailand, flooding risks highlighted. The Thai Meteorological Department, TMD, has issued a warning of heavy rain across Thailand over the next 10 days, with significant rainfall anticipated from September 13 to September 20. The TMD has highlighted that a strong monsoon will impact the country, raising concerns about potential flooding and forest runoff. According to the daily rainfall forecast, updated from 7 a.m. to 7 a.m. the following day, severe weather is expected based on data from the European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecasts, ECMWF. The forecast uses a color-coded system, red for heavy rain and green for light rain. The previously observed low atmospheric pressure in the upper northern region has moved towards Myanmar, but the monsoon trough has returned to northern Thailand, bringing moderately strong southwesterly winds. Rainfall is anticipated to persist in the western parts of northern Thailand, including areas such as Tak, Mae Hong Sun, and Chiang Mai, though it may decrease slightly over the next few days, with some clearer skies and sunshine expected. Despite this, water levels in northern river basins should be closely monitored. The northeastern, central, eastern, and southern regions of Thailand, including Ranong, Phang Nga, Phuket, Chanthaburi, and Trat, are forecasted to experience widespread rainfall. Heavy rain could lead to flash floods and forest runoff, particularly in northern areas. Road users are advised to exercise caution due to slippery conditions and increased accident risks. The sea will experience moderate waves, so sailors and fishermen should navigate with care. The monsoon trough and strong southwest monsoon winds will lead to intensified rainfall and potential heavy to very heavy rain in some locations. Residents in Bangkok and surrounding areas should remain vigilant as the heavy rain may exacerbate flooding, potentially causing water stagnation and drainage issues.
It is crucial to stay informed with the latest updates from the TMD and other meteorological sources as weather conditions may change. Demon loan sharks arrested in Chanburi, gangs predatory practices exposed. Demon loan sharks busted, ruthless gang uncovered in Chanburi. In a dramatic police operation, two members of the notorious Demon Loan Shark Gang have been apprehended after their illegal loan activities expanded into Chanburi. The suspects, 35-year-old Yathafam and 25-year-old Kiathafam, were arrested at a secluded housing estate where their illicit business was operating. Acting on a tip-off, police conducted a raid on their single-story residence, discovering a substantial amount of evidence, including thousands of illegal loan business cards, bank records, mobile phones, helmets, and four motorcycles believed to be connected to their predatory practices. Yathafam claimed they offered loans with various repayment schedules, daily, weekly, and monthly, and stated that no external financiers were involved, with less than 100,000 baht lent out. However, investigators found that the gang was charging exorbitant interest rates of up to 20% per day, far exceeding legal limits. The suspects now face severe charges for running an unlicensed loan operation and imposing illegal interest rates. During questioning, Yathafam admitted that the illegal operation had been running for four to five months and that they rented the house for 8,000 baht per month. Their primary targets were small business owners in Bo Win, Layam Charbang, and Pattaya. Both suspects have been taken to Bo Win Police Station for further investigation, while authorities continue to track down other members of the criminal network. In related news, Thai Cyber Police have arrested another major loan shark in Camp Hang Phet after reports of him imposing exorbitant interest rates and making threats. This individual charged borrowers up to 16,000 baht per day, causing significant distress. Additionally, in Nonthaburi, several loan sharks armed with a machete mistakenly targeted the wrong person and fled in fear after a 56-year-old man disarmed them. The attackers later claimed to have been assaulted. Thank you for tuning in today. For the latest updates and daily news, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Have a wonderful day.